this is the human brain. And at Specs Lab, we studied the human brain and we discovered something truly amazing, which is appearing in this article today in PNES. What we looked at was a specific question how is memory in the human brain really formed? And how does memory depend on our voluntary action? So this link between free will and memory. This is a relevant question because from psychological studies, we know there's a relationship between active engagement, active learning and the quality of memory, but we don't know how the brain did it. And this is really what we, what we found out. So we had, 12 epilepsy patients in Hospital Del Mar. They had electrodes in their brain, which is used to diagnose and identify the location where the seizures start. But since we had the electrodes in there, we also asked them to volunteer in our experiment. And we had them navigate in this environment where they made their own choices. So they had free will to act. They should go, we were asked to go to the red boxes and to remember the pictures. And as you can see, so here, the yellow and blue colors in the corner indicate the kinds of signals we measure. You also see them coming by there on the top. And what we discovered, one, the first observation was that in those signals, in particular, if we zoom in on one specific structure called the hippocampus, which we see here, the, the, the yellow structure uh, here to the side, um, that the activity is organized, it's orchestrated, in particular, there's a slowly oscillating response around five hertz, so five cycles per second, which is called the theta wave, which becomes very strong and prominent when you're active. When you're passive in this environment, so you just go around on a little cart, you're not making your own choices, you don't see this pronounced oscillatory response. So the first observation was that we show that the quality of the memory recall depends critically on the prominence of this slow oscillatory response that, um, that orchestrates how the memory is formed. So um, secondly, what we then found, so free will action in the real world creates an orchestrating carrier wave in which memory is formed. And then we unpacked what happened inside each cycle of this wave. And we observed that actually within that, again, the memory items are organized in a very specific way so that things that look similar, let's say pictures of animals, are actually put far apart inside the wave as if the brain wants to make sure it can clearly separate that information. We also observe that within every cycle of this wave, storing a new memory happens in one part of the cycle while well, remembering something from the past happens in another part of the cycle. So the theta wave is the big orchestrator of memory that is driven by our voluntary action. So what does it mean? What are the implications of this? Well, we want to improve education, give people the freedom to learn and discover. Don't dominate, don't just do, uh, don't follow instruction in a top-down fashion. Also, we can start to rethink about building new therapies for memory, memory formation, as for instance in Alzheimer's disease. Because now we know we can boost memory when we make people active. So we have to rethink also how we build cognitive reserve in patients who have deficits of memory. And most, most fundamentally, it again shows our brains are built for people who have freedom. Freedom to act, freedom to experience, and freedom to recollect.